There is nothing on this planet that is more satisfying than rolling up on a cocky V8 owner and giving them the old brake boosted one, two, three honk, leaving them in the dust and hearing nothing but excuses after you've wiped the freaking floor with them. Now, finding a car that's not a V8 that will beat up on other V8s and do it without breaking the bank can be a bit of a daunting task. And it does come with a couple little sacrifices, but if you're willing to roll up your sleeves and do some work by yourself, you can really go a long way with not a ton of money and take down cars way above your league. Let's go grab yourself your favorite snacks, sit back, relax, because right now I'm gonna show you guys how to identify a little sleeper worth modifying and what you may need to do to spank some V8 heinies. And be sure to stick around for the last one because boy, this one sure is gonna blow your freaking mind. But really quick, before we dive right in, you guys only got a couple weeks to still get entered into the S2000 plus $10,000 cash giveaway. And to celebrate, we just launched some brand new giveaway merch and accessories. First off, Fruit Loops cereal scented air freshener, game changer. Do yourself a favor, buy 10. They're going so quick, they literally will not let me order anymore. And check out this brand new gas pump apparel. You can get it on a t-shirt, you can get it on a tank top, or you can get it in this ridiculously sick, super limited production tie-dye hoodie. All right, let's get into the video. Let's talk about what we're looking for here. First and foremost, essentially, at the end of the day, performance is largely based on your vehicle's power to weight ratio, right? From the most basic perspective, we're looking for a car that weighs a moderate amount that either makes decent power out of the box or has a lot of potential to make power. So how do we still find a quick, affordable car that kill V8s? Well, for starters, we're probably looking at something a little older, probably at least 10 years or more. From there, the most power potential is gonna come from something probably already boosted from the factory. Not to say an actually aspirated car can't make this list, but for the most part, we're probably looking at something already boosted. And then from there, you, we gotta find some more undesirables. Whether that's aged looks or expensive common issues, these are the things that are gonna tank a car's value. And that's where we enthusiasts can swoop in and take advantage of the savings. Now, I think one of the most perfect examples of all these things is definitely the neon, or rather the not neon Dodge SRT4. The SRT4 literally hits all the important stuff right on the head. These cars are pushing 15 plus years old, so nobody's buying these things just to drive them. So you're not really competing with the general public for this used car, which is really aggressive these days and everything is expensive and it sucks. Anyway, this thing has a turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder. Now, displacement is kind of the middle of the road here, but what really pushes this car into the list is this car's tuning potential. Even with a super duper ultra tiny little baby turbo, a couple of bolt-ons, you can really make a solid 300 wheel horsepower. And since this not neon weighs in just under 3,000 pounds, it can move out in a damn quick hurry. Putting a lot of VAs to shame with just a couple hundred dollars, the really, really basic bolt-ons, you guys. Sure, you have manual windows, in the back and they rust really really bad and they kind of look stupid and they have really juvenile reputations and you probably won't get hired anywhere if you show up to a job interview in a neon with a hood scoop and a big spoiler on it but it will on v8s for very very cheap and if you get the right wheels and the right tires on these cars they look really really good even on track with some decent suspension and a sticky tire these cars are real ego killers now a big one that really gets slept on is the infinity g37 now yes they can be a little pricey for your later years low mileage examples, but a mid-mild early production G37 is a really, really cheap, quick car. But after Infinity rebranded the G to Q, they got a whole new facelift to go along with that same 3.7 meter drivetrain, and eventually they were delivered a twin turbo Q60 that's extremely popular right now with a ton of potential, but that doesn't matter. Because in the eyes of most, the G37 is the most outdated Infinity, but in reality, the G37 is a certified ripper. and 30 horsepower out of the box is already really healthy. But the handicap here is the 3,600 pound curb weight. You start messing around with the all wheel drive and it only goes up from there. However, this car with some basic bolt-ons and a reflash of the computer, these things will chew up and spit out some pretty modern V8. I've seen it happen with my own damn eyes. And don't forget these cars look absolutely astonishing with a really nice set of deep, super concave, multi-piece wheels, especially when you get that be nice and nice. Volvo, the automaker known for making boxy, safe, and ultra boring vehicles. But for a little while there, Volvo was making some real cool engines. You put those engines in some really regular looking cars. So hear me out. 
the 1998 model year, Volvo released their S70 sedan and the V70 wagon in T5 trim, right? This is nothing new. T5 essentially just means turbo five-cylinder from Volvo. Now, Volvo did have multiple turbo five-cylinder options, but T5 designated the lowest displacement with the strongest internals with the largest turbo offered from Volvo at that time. Also offered at that time in 1998 was a newly available manual transmission option for these turbo cars in the United States, which hadn't been a thing yet. Now I know right away a turbo manual Volvo probably doesn't sound that cool, but the T5 engine from this generation is a really, really stout unit. It had factory H beam rods, really, really strong dish pistons, really strong bow train. And when you get it with the shorter gears that come with the manual transmission, these things really start to rip out of the box. And then you can just go and throw on some factory parts from a little bit newer 04 to 07 S60R, turn that boost up to 25, and you will genuinely have a one wheel peeling monster. I would know. I used to have a 98 V70 T5M, and that thing would murder V8s every day. Super fun cars, kind of hard to find, but when you do, they're still pretty cheap because it's still a Volvo. They're really reliable, also because Volvo is a great platform for beginners because they're really easy to work on, they're comfortable and they garner literally zero negative attention from the police. Now the 5x108 bolt patterns can make finding wheels a little bit difficult, but guess what? We started our very own in-house wheel brand, Artists of Art Formed Wheels, and they have wheels designed specifically for the perfect fitment for Focus ST. Now, I don't know if you know much about the Volvos and the Focuses from this time, but Ford and Volvo were kind of in together. Same bolt pattern, it's the same offsets. The Artist of Fitment for Focus ST is perfect for Volvo. There's one right outside right now, and it looks fantastic. Now, obviously we couldn't get through this list without bringing up the E90, E92 BMW 335. Now, big fat warning here. This is probably gonna be one of the more complicated cars on this list, and by more complicated, I mean the most complicated. Now, not that they're inherently bad, but more so they're the most advanced on this list, one could say. Direct injection is gonna have carbon issues that you're gonna have to address. And if it fails, you have all kinds of really expensive high pressure fuel pumps and injectors and all that. The factory turbos are typical small turbo stuff. They wear out over time and they can lead to a lot of issues. You know, you got oil consumption, you gotta rebuild these things, it can get pretty expensive but these cars make decent power and torque out of the box. So if you have basic mechanical knowledge and an internet connection, you can really turn these cars into something absolutely crazy all by yourself. The complicated fuel system that is really expensive to replace when it goes bad, well, it also means you can slap more boost into this baby without having to buy any fueling upgrades right away. The turbo issues, a good excuse to get a big old fast single turbo kit because while on the outside, these cars will nickel and dime you to death, on the inside, these things have really, really strong internals. Literally, Jake Spence's 135 with the same engine as the 335 makes 700 150 horsepower on a sealed engine. Never been opened up. These cars just love making power with infinity boots. Now, this is probably the most expensive car on this list to buy as well and to modify and to upkeep, but it's also the fastest one on this list out of the box and probably also has the most potential out of any other car on this list. Whether you want a track monster, a quick daily, a fast daily, or a friggin' shooting mile high horsepower build, you can do it with this car. If that final horsepower number is important, you get a 335. And good God, you get the right wheel set up on this car and they look absolutely fantastic. And lastly, one of the best combinations of cost to own, cost to modify, and overall decentness of a vehicle has to go to the 1.8T Volkswagen Jetta or GTI. These are some of the best platforms to get started with. It's one of the cheapest ways to get into a boosted platform, both with the Jetta and the GTI are also both very well-sized, convenient cars to own, really. Parts are dirt cheap, information and DIY write-ups are literally everywhere. With a couple basic bolt-ons, these things can make really decent power, blow your eardrums out with your classic 1.8T shotgun two-step tune. <laughs> Oh my God. And they aren't gonna break the bank doing it. In fact, I learned most of what I know today from working on 180s back in the day. The interior is a nice place to be too. Not to mention that these cars have almost unlimited aftermarket availability from performance all the way to aesthetic. I've seen people lift these things. I've seen people air them out on their freaking frames, have a front wheel drive drag stance, all the way to full on award-winning show car. But you simply cannot go wrong with a 180 Volkswagen. I mean, let's be real. We all know somebody that has one, right? So why not jump in head first? We can all just group share coil packs and specialty tools. It'll be really fun. But what are some V8 lane cars that you would drive? I know there's a ton more and I'd love to even hear about one that I haven't found out about yet and try it out. I hope this video brought you some sort of value and even if it didn't, it would mean the world to me if you guys give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe or you'll make Alex sad. And of course, make sure to grab some limited drop merch to get entered to win our S2000 build and $10,000 in freaking cash. I'm Sean, Sean B.FI on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.